برحب فيكم اعزائي الطلاب ومنشوف الفيلم يلي بيوضح تعاقب الجيلين تكاثر السراخيس ما هي السراخيس طبعا الفيلم هو سلسلة افلام رائعة جدا عن تكاثر النباتات هلا اللازهرية مثلا هون عم يحكي فهون عنا بالبداية عم بيحكي عن النباتات الزهرية وهون الفيرنز يلي هن السراخيس نبدأ فيهم طبعا هي السراخيس هي نباتات هون على السريع بس حاعرضها هيك نباتات تنتشر ب في كل تزرع في المشاتل هي السراخيس There are as many as 12,000 species of ferns هذا الموضوع طبعا ما نتفق طبعا جيل البوي هو جيل المسيطر مثل ما شفنا ولماذا كلها مواضيع حكيناها هي الورقه اكياس البويه على الوجه السفلي هي كيس كيس بقع بويه نسميها In many others, it is covered by a cap, supported by a central stalk. This protective covering is called an indusium. In some ferns, this covering is cup-shaped. The sorus itself contains numerous sac-like structures. Each of these is called a sporangium. The outer wall of the sporangium consists of a layer of protective jacket cells. As the sporangium matures, A row of jacket cells enlarged to form a band known as the annulus. Annulus. The outer wall of each annulus is very thin and delicate. No problem. After we learned, it became a topic we could turn to even to preserve the annulus. This is 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 the annulus. Below the jacket, there are two layers of cells called the tapetum, which nourish the fertile tissue within. The fertile tissue consists of sporocyte cells. Each sporocyte cell is diploid, containing two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent. As each cell matures, its nucleus divides twice by the process of meiosis. القسم النصي يعطي Depositing a very tough protective coat of sporopollenin. Surrounded by this thick resistant wall, each cell is now called a spore. الآن عملية خروجها من الكيس البوي تتم بواسطة الطبقة الآلية مو هيك؟ هي مجموعة الأكياس البوية كلياتها أصبحت ناضجة. الآن تفتحة تحررة للأبواغ ريليز سبور كيف يتم؟ رجعنا لاحظوا التفتح هاي الطبقة الآلية اللي سيكون The tension or pull between the remaining water molecules and the wall now increases. The thick inner and side walls resist this. A 
the thin outer walls are easily pulled inward. Pulling in the outer walls causes the annulus to contract much like an accordion. Shortening the annulus tears the lip cells apart. As the annulus continues to shorten, the tear enlarges and the spore case opens further. When too much water is lost, the water molecules are no longer able to hold together. When this happens, the pull on the wall is released and the annulus springs forward, closing the sporangium so fast that the spores are thrown out. This process is repeated in thousands of sporangia on a leaf, so that large quantities of spores are released. When spores land on a moist surface, those which germinate first will form bisexual or hermaphroditic individuals. A rhizoid emerges and attaches the spore to the soil. This is followed by a sheet of cells, which is the undemitified or prothallus. A notch forms on the prothallus that contains dividing cells. This is called the notch meristem. Continuous growth results in a hard-shaped bisexual gametophyte. The lower surface is firmly attached to the soil by numerous rhizoids. Male gametangia, called anthorhia, a form of the posterior end of the gametophyte. The outer wall of anthoridium consists of ring cells and a cap cell, which surround fertile tissue. At the anterior end of the prothallus, close to the notch, there are female gametangia called archegonia. An archegonium consists of a neck containing a neck canal cell. At the base of the neck, there is a swollen region called the venta that contains an egg cell. Gamma tangier of both sexes may be present at the same time or at different times. The timing of their appearance will determine if there will be self-fertilization or cross-fertilization. In some ferns, archegonia are formed first, and when flooded with water, a hormone called anthoridiogen is released. This hormone will stimulate the gestures of plants to stop growing and form anthridia, but no archegonia. A bisexual gametophyte in a female phase may therefore be surrounded by several male gametophytes, increasing the chances of cross-fertilization. Being close to the soil, the small gametophytes are easily flooded when it rains. This water plays an important role in fertilization. Water stimulates the cat cell on the anthurinian to open, releasing the sperm cells. The flagellated sperm are now able to move within the water in search of an egg. Sperm consists of a spiral cell body bearing numerous flagella that move it forward. Water also stimulates the archegonia to open. The contents of the neck can then diffuse into the surrounding water, where they act as a sperm attractant. The attractant stimulates a sperm to swim towards the open archegonium. It then swims into the opening and moves up the neck canal towards the egg cell. Fertilization is accomplished when the egg and sperm nuclei 
views. In the image, no attain. This creates a single deployed cell. The zygote. By the molecular, the zygote. الآن هالبيضة الملقحة هاي تعطي النبات البوغي هلا المضغة ومن ثم النبات البوغي الفتي ثم النبات البوغي كله في مشار حقيقي حجم الاتصباع العالم أو المصور هي مشار حقيقي في صورة طبعا رسم هي البيضة الملقحة الآن تنمو بواسطة انقسامات ونمو Other parts of the embryo form the first leaf and the future stem, the rhizome. The leaf grows through the notch in the gametophyte to reach the sunlight. Eventually the rhizome emerges and provides additional leaves and roots. In this way, a new plant is formed. The matures into another spore-producing fern, completing the reproductive cycle. We have seen that the fern reproductive cycle contains two plants, the large familiar spore plant or sporophyte and a tiny gamete plant or gametophyte. Using spores to travel great distances and gametes to introduce genetic variability, ferns have spread and evolved throughout the world.